Welcome to the Cyber Sky. During the recent COVID-19 crisis in America, most school systems have taken to using some sort of online video conferencing software in order for teachers to engage with their students. But are these platforms secure and safe? Like any online service, Zoom has had some security issues. This week, Zoom added new security measures and changed some default settings. According to a Zoom announcement, on April 5, 2020, Zoom will enable the waiting room feature and two meeting password settings for all basic users and pro users with a single license, including K-12 education accounts who have the 40-minute limit temporarily waived. That being said, here are some more tips and features to maintain control of your meetings and keep your Zooms safe and secure. Solution 1. Keep invites private. According to an article on Forbes.com, the temptation is high to post links to Zoom meetings on social media or take a screenshot of the link and pass it around. The problem is there's no way to keep track of who's received the invite and if the invite reached the intended targets. The easiest way to ensure the link isn't seen by those who shouldn't have it is to email participants directly, either from the Zoom app, direct email, or set up a meeting in Google Calendar, add a link to the meeting in the description and share that with your intended participants. <laughs> Solution two, don't use your personal meeting ID. It's easy to just send out your personal meeting ID for every meeting. Don't. Why not? Once someone gets a hold of the link, they can drop in and disrupt things whenever they like. Anyone, for example, students, who you've had a Zoom conference with before can now use your personal meeting ID to enter any meeting at any time. Instead, generate unique IDs for each meeting. To do this, you just have to leave generate automatically option checked when you schedule a meeting. Solution 3. Require a password. Zoom can automatically generate a password for each scheduled meeting and share that password as part of the invitation. You should require a password for absolutely every meeting you start from Zoom. This will automatically be in place starting April 5th, but if you want to check the settings yourself, log into the website and select Require Password when scheduling new meetings, Require a password for instant meetings, and require a password for personal meeting ID. You should also disable the option embed password in meeting link for one click join and enable require password for participants joining by phone. This will prevent uninvited guests, whether they join by computer or call in the number on their phone. Solution four, turn off screen sharing. Screen sharing is what allows participants to take control of the meeting and display their screen. If your meeting is secure and you know all the participants, you might want them to be able to screen share. However, if you have a large group where you have invited hundreds of people and can't possibly keep track of everyone who is in the meeting, you might want to disable screen sharing so that only you can share a screen. Scroll down to the in meeting basic section and scroll to who can share, select host only. People can still request to share their screen and you can allow it individually when needed. Solution five, use waiting rooms. This means when participants click the link and open Zoom, they do not instantly join the meeting. They are in a waiting room until the host admits them. This enables you to screen everyone and make sure there are no uninvited guests. Congratulations, you made it to extra credit. I'm going to give you some tips for maintaining control over your meetings, also known as virtual classroom management. Of course, if you're using Zoom for the first time, whether in a business setting or with students, you should review best practices for your meetings. I explained to my students, what you do or say here is not private. Don't reveal any personal information and don't say or type anything that you wouldn't want your mother to read or hear. However, as we know, some don't always follow the rules. So here are some ways you can maintain control of your meetings. The first thing we can do is be familiar with where the mute all controls are. They're on the bottom right underneath your list of participants. You can mute all and you can unmute all. If you click the more button, you can choose to 
lock the meeting so that no one can join once you've taken attendance. You can mute participants upon entry, allow participants to unmute themselves or not allow them to unmute themselves. And of course, you can have a chime ring to let you know when someone new has entered the meeting. This is equivalent to sending someone on a timeout. Zoom gives you the option to start your meeting when the first person joins, even if it's not the host. This can be convenient if you're hosting a meeting and running a few minutes late. To protect your meetings, however, it's best to turn this feature off. That way you'll know that no one can start your meeting without you, especially a hacker or a Zoom bomber. Just make sure the settings join before host is off. Thank you for watching CyberSky videos. Hope you learned something. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button, leave a comment, subscribe for more content, and ring the bell for notifications. You can also find us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at CyberSky videos. Tell me what questions you still have about Zoom, and I'll include it in a future video. Until next time, stay blessed.